Hey everybody, Joe Rignoli here, back with part three in this little video series that I'm doing to just give you an example of how everything in the body is connected. It's not a good idea to just treat one little part of the body, you really have to treat the whole system. So in the first couple of videos I talked, uh, I'll give you a real brief overview of glucose metabolism and insulin and how we can become insulin resistant and that could cause us to store more fat than we necessarily need. That in turn can affect your brain because the fat tissue produces a hormone called leptin that leptin's job is to communicate with the brain that storage is good and nutrient status is good and we can stop eating for a while. But of course, if that signal doesn't get to the brain, that in turn is going to send a signal to the thyroid to turn down your metabolism. And so we end up with this pretty bad situation. So what happens from there? Thyroid hormone or the active form of thyroid, T3, is used literally in, in every single cell in our body. Uh, but for this video, I'm going to talk about how it can affect uh, cholesterol and hormones. So let's take a look at what happens inside the liver. We're going to go inside the liver and we have this liver cell here and this liver cell's job is to create bile. Bile of course is used to break down fats and if you're not able to break down fats then you're likely going to be deficient in some essential uh, fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. You're also not going to be able to, uh, you're going to have tr uh, trouble eating things like butter and bacon and that's just a horrible life to live. Nobody wants that. So um, we need bile. And one of the things that's required in order to produce bile is cholesterol. So how does cholesterol get from the blood to this cell and then into the cell so it can produce bile? So here's what's interesting. Cholesterol is a fat soluble substance and your blood is water based. And so in order for cholesterol to move throughout the body, it needs to be carried in something. And that something is called low dense lipoprotein low dense lipoprotein so you can think about it as a boat that's moving through your bloodstream this ldl particle and the passengers in that boat are cholesterol so we have little cholesterol particles being carried in this ldl boat so it can get to all the parts in the body where it's needed to do all these vital functions okay and then on the surface of this cell this liver cell you have receptors and these receptors are called LDL receptors, LDL receptors. And as you might imagine, the job of these LDL receptors are to catch these LDL particles, these boats, as they float by. And that's how cholesterol gets up into the cell where it can do its job to help make bile. So what happens if your thyroid is suppressed? So you're not making enough thyroid hormone. Let's go to send a signal to the cells to downregulate these LDL receptors. And if you have less LDL receptors, you're gonna have more LDL particles floating around in the blood because they're not gonna be taken up into the cell where, where the cholesterol is gonna be used to, to make bile and other vital su uh, substances that's need, needed for. So then you're going to uh, go to your doctor and your doctor is going to run a very basic lipid panel. And it is extremely basic, tells us nearly nothing about what's really going on in the body. But he's going to run this basic uh, lipid uh, profile and he's going to freak out because he's going to say that your cholesterol is high. He's going to freak out, he's going to say, we've got to put you on statins right away or you're going to die tomorrow. But of course you know that the problem really isn't just cholesterol, the problem is something else. So let's go back through this chain of events. It could be liver function, it could be thyroid function, it could be uh, leptin resistance, it could be inflammation, it could be any or all of those things, but the problem really isn't this end result of, of high cholesterol. And just treating the high cholesterol with a statin is going to allow all these other processes to continue on, and you're going to end up with more problems down the road because you're only treating one part of the body, or you're only treating a lab result, which really isn't a problem to begin with. So let's talk about hormones for a second. It's a, it's a similar situation with hormones. Again, in order to make your steroidal hormones like estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, DHA, cortisol, things like that, you require cortis uh, cholesterol. The cholesterol has to get to your adrenal glands, to your, to your gonads in order to make those substances. The other thing that hormones require are T3. So you get sort of a double whammy there. If you're thyroid suppressed or you're not making enough thyroid hormone, and you're not getting, and the cholesterol is not getting to where it needs to go, then you're going to have trouble making all of those hormones that, that you need. And that's going to obviously open you up to a whole host of other issues. 
So I think I'm going to end this video here, and in the next video I'm going to talk a little bit more about the symptoms you might ex expect from that, and why it's a bad idea to just treat hormones, and bring that back around to inflammation, and you can see how it's this sort of vicious cycle. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.